What's up, guys? Hopefully all of you are doing well. I am doing much better. I will tell you in another video what has been going on with me, but today we're going to be making a sweet potato layer cake. I definitely wanted to come back and close out the year with you guys and have some fun. Let's get into it. We're going to start this recipe with some unsalted room temperature butter. And to that, I'm going to add the sugars. We're using both granulated sugar and some light brown sugar. Just blend those together until they're well incorporated. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add the eggs. There are three. I'm going to add the eggs one at a time, making sure each one is well incorporated before adding the next. For the exact measurements to this recipe, be sure and check out gdseasoning.com. The link to this recipe will be below in the description box and in the top comment in the comment section. To the batter, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of pure vanilla extract. I don't know about y'all, but I'm still in my feelings of the fact that a 16 ounce bottle of vanilla extract is still holding out at somewhere between $32.99 and $35.99 at the wholesale stores. But maybe that's just me. Moving on to the star of the show, the actual sweet potatoes. These are sweet potatoes that I purchased, um, washed them up really good, baked them in the oven at a high temperature, and then I smoothed them out with a hand mixer. This can be done days in advance. If you read the recipe, it will guide you on how to get your sweet potatoes nice and smooth for this recipe. But now what I don't want you to do is get in a game of semantics. Here's what I said in 2016, and it still holds true to this day. Now it's inevitable every time I do a recipe that contains yams, quote unquote, or sweet potatoes, someone is gonna get down in them comments and wanna argue what the difference is. Let me tell you, they are all a variety of sweet potato. Whether it's a jewel sweet potato, or a Hannah sweet potato, or a Garnet, quote unquote, yam, or a Japanese sweet potato, all of them are varieties of sweet potato. Free your mind and open up your taste buds. You'll be just fine. <laughs> My goal here is to make things as easy on you as possible. If I can't, I will try to walk you through the steps so you can have the ending result that we all desire. A good recipe that everybody wants to eat. <laughs> so I'm just going to add the sweet potatoes right to the batter and I'm going to blend that until it's smooth. What I like to do is sift the ingredients right over the wet. So we have the all purpose flour, some cinnamon and nutmeg, baking powder, baking soda, and some salt. And I'm just gonna shake that right over the batter. The quicker this batter comes together, the better off, cause you don't wanna over mix it. So I'm just gonna shake that right over the batter and you don't have to use a lot of dishes. Then what you need to do to avoid a dust cloud is take a spatula or spoon and sometimes I will add the buttermilk too in. Just add everything in because the buttermilk is the last ingredient. I will stir everything together just until the flour or that dry mixture is absorbed into the batter. Then put it back on the stand mixer or go back to using your hand mixer and blend it just until the batter comes together and you want to stop. Okay, so the directions are going to tell you to add that buttermilk directly in with the dry ingredients, give it a nice stir, and then mix one last time quickly and stop. As you can see, the batter is quite um, thick so don't be afraid when you see it. It is the way it's supposed to be. We're gonna bake the cake layers in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 35 minutes or until a toothpick can be inserted in the center and comes out clean. Once the cake layers come out of the oven, we're going to let them cool in the pans for about five minutes. As you can see, the cake bakes right up to the rim, just about. So you wanna make sure your cake rounds, which are nine inch, are at least two inches deep. The cake layers themselves are somewhat dense, but I still managed to hang on to some of the fluff and definitely keep the moisture in so that the cake itself would be very tasty. This recipe went through quite a few changes. I discovered that um, I prefer a cream cheese icing on this particular cake. I will give you the recipes for both a vanilla buttercream, which you can spice up with additional spices like the cinnamon, maybe a little nutmeg and a pinch of allspice if you'd like, or you could just leave it plain like this, um, or you can use the cream cheese frosting and spice it up, you know, any way you like. But I discovered because it has a bit of sweetness and you really get a lot of the sweet potato flavor that I prefer the cream cheese frosting with it. As I said earlier, we'll be talking later in another video about why I needed a break. And I'd like to take this moment to thank all of you for your patience. And I'd like to thank those of you who sent me comments, emails, DMs. 
Um, some of y'all put APBs out on me asking me if I was okay. Facebook messaging, I'd like to thank you guys for all of that. It was much appreciated. And a lot of the times it was very timely. Thank you all for hanging out and cooking with me. You know I appreciate it. Don't forget this recipe and others can be found at gdseasoning.com. And I'll see you next time.